G'day. I was just about finished editing this video when I realized it was quite long. So what I've done is I've produced a second version of it that's condensed down and is much shorter. And by the time you're seeing this, it should already be out there. On with the video. G'day. This video is a follow-up from the video I posted a couple of weeks ago about oxalic acid strips. In that video, I mentioned that we are making and selling these strips, and that generated a lot of questions online, by phone. It also generated quite a lot of orders, and what's really important from my perspective is that when people use oxalic acid strips to treat their hives, doesn't matter whether they're using the strips we make or somebody else's product, there's some stuff you need to know if you want to make sure it's effective. The first and most important point I want to make is that our experience is that oxalic acid extended release strips are really good at maintaining low levels of varroa mites in hives. What they're not very good at is bringing down mite levels if you allow them to get high. So if you use them correctly and use them to keep strips at a low level all the time, and I stress that all the time, then you don't really have to use anything else. What do we do if through some occurrence, whether it's a slip up on our part or whether it's uh, reinvasion pressure from other hives in the area where we are at, what do we do if the mite levels do get high? We use vaporization, oxalic acid vaporization to kill the phoretic mites, which means that one treatment alone probably won't do the job. Two, preferably three treatments, four to eight days apart, will bring the mite levels back down again. You can combine those treatments with putting fresh oxalic acid strips in. Another really important point we are not selling Varroa mite treatments. What we're selling is some strips which you can use to turn into Varroa mite treatments. And that's important because the effectiveness of these strips is just as much to do with how they're soaked, which I'm gonna talk about in this video, and how they're applied, how often you put them in, when you put them in, when you replace them. The next thing I want to talk about is a phone call that I got just after that video went out from another New Zealander saying, hey, I invented those strips and I have the patent for them and you can't sell them. Now we had a long conversation, very amiable conversation I might say, and by the end of it, he had conceded that actually the patent, well actually he conceded it later in a text message, but he conceded he wasn't going to try and enforce any patent on us. Uh, he does make these strips, he does sell them, he's been doing it for some time, but his strips are made differently from ours. He focuses on trying to make strips that last a long time in the hive. We focus on making strips that get torn down very quickly. The one that you think is the right method is the one that you should buy. Our strips are torn down quickly and to our mind that facilitates the delivery of the oxalic acid throughout the hive quickly. If it's too quick, then obviously they will toss all the oxalic acid out the front door before it's been in there long enough to span the life cycle of a mite. However, in the spring, when the cluster is very small, they will tear down the bits of the strips, as I showed in my last video, that are inside the cluster. And as spring progresses and the hive gets stronger, the cluster will expand and they will tear down the strips that are around the outside, the remaining strips that are around the outside of the cluster. And so in fact, even if some of the strips get torn down very quickly, the delivery of oxalic acid over the spring period is spread out over quite a prolonged period with our strips. Another point that has been raised with us is which kind of jib tape, drywall tape, are you using and is it absorbent enough to take on board enough oxalic acid 
to be effective and in particular is it made in China because the Chinese chip tape is made of recycled paper uh, which is glued together and therefore does not absorb enough oxalic acid to be effective. So I'm going to go into the process that we use to assess whether the strips, whether the tape that we're using is absorbent enough to deliver enough oxalic acid into the hive. We do this regularly as a regular test because when we go out and buy rolls of tape we don't actually necessarily know where it's come from and uh, it's been said to me since COVID-19 all of the drywall tape in New Zealand is sourced from China. All the drywall tape that's available in shops. Well we have been testing the absorption levels of the tape we use for several years now in the test that I'm about to show you and I have no difficulty in saying that the tape that we're using to sell is going to absorb enough oxalic acid provided you make the strips correctly and by that I mean you need to soak them properly you need to get the temperature of the mixture up high enough to get it to absorb you need to make sure that the strips are not so tightly packed that they can't absorb right into the center and uh, there's a little bit of an art to that so let's get on and I'll show you how to do that so please excuse the mess on my bench I'm halfway through another project I've got a sample here of 18 of our strips why 18 because I asked Stephen to make a sample and that's what he gave me all right so I'm just going to measure them weigh them 163 grams 163 divided by 18 almost exactly just slightly over 9 grams each that's an important thing to know because I want to work out how much of the oxalic acid glycerine mixture is absorbed into each strip so I need to know what they weigh before I put them into the mixture. So this is the boiler that I showed in the last video. Incidentally, uh, I just shifted it here that day from another location inside the shed and the bottom fell out of it. We've had to remanufacture the bit that contains the element and then we discovered that the TIG welding that went on underneath ruined the seal of the base and it's taken a significant amount of fiddling around uh, finalised by adding a, uh, a container of radiator stop leak to get it to stop leaking. I see there is just a tiny little bit of moisture around the base at the moment. I'm not sure whether that's uh, some ongoing seepage or leak or whether it's the residue of the water that I spilt when I was filling it up. What I do know is that that level glass there is showing the level there, that's staying constant. It's not moving around. So I'm pretty confident. The reason that that's important is that uh, the oxalic acid glycerin mixture that's in there has been heated to 60 or 70 degrees. The water jacket, the water around it, Make sure that that heating is uh, gentle uh, as opposed to applying an element directly to it runs all sorts of risks of superheating it and it vaporizing. Okay, I'm going to set up now to do a pour. I'm going to take the sample strips that I weighed earlier in this video and I'm going to place them on top of the pour crosswise so that the, it's easy to distinguish them at the other end when I want to re-weigh them after they've been uh, saturated. So these are the 18 sample ones that I weighed. We've got here a few strips, plenty. So I'll put those 18 aside because they're going to go in last. This is the drum. Now, 
first things first, take the rubber bands off. You don't want them squeezed tight together when you're soaking them. The next important thing is that you want to get them each pile. I'm going to fill it right up to there because these are going to expand as they absorb the oxalic acid mixture. You want to get roughly the same height. So that one's higher than that one. I can shift them around. And because this container doesn't fit a nice neat number, I'm going to put some in on the side down here just to stop things from shifting around. And then we've got these ones, which I'm going to put across like this. So then the next thing is that when I put the mixture in here, these strips are going to want to float up. So I want to hold them down so that they all get submerged by the mixture. But at the same time, I don't want to put so much weight on there that they uh, get tightly compacted and the mixture can't soak in. So here's what I do. I get a bucket with some water in it and I put it in on top. And the reason I use a bucket of water is that I can easily add water or take water out of that bucket to get the amount of weight that I'm applying to these strips about right. And then we put this, we put the mixture in. Now this uh, pipe might be blocked, sometimes it gets blocked between uses. Yep, okay, so I'm going to have to free it up. I'll come back once I've got it freed up. So I just poked a little hole through the bit of cold mixture that was in that pipe. As the hot stuff flows through, it'll melt stuff around it and the flow rate will pick up. So now, the next question. What temperature is this mixture? I've got it set at about 65. You can go up to 70. The hotter it is, the more the strips will absorb or the more easily they will absorb. But don't go too hot because at 147 degrees centigrade, oxalic acid vaporizes. And if you let that happen, that's a bad day for everybody in the area. Okay, so that's really starting to flow now. I have, I'd normally have the bucket sitting on top while I'm doing this, but I've left it to one side so you can see what's happening. The next really important point, how much mixture do I put in here? And the answer is, there needs to be enough so that when all of those strips have fully absorbed everything they're going to absorb it's still full the surplus mixture that's left over after you pull the strips out and wipe all the surplus off can go back into the vat and get heated up for the next batch now i don't know if you can see that those strips are coming up so i'm going to turn that off i'm going to sit some water on top of there I'm going to push down quite hard just to assess how we're going. Almost got enough mixture in there. So I'll just add a bit more. I'm not giving you any specific measurements here because I don't do it by measurement. I do it by feel and by experience. So what I want to do now is I want to weight that bucket just to the point where the mixture is near the top. So as I add water to the bucket, that increases the amount of downward pressure.
pretty close there. Alright, last important point. When I come back here tomorrow, if any of these strips are not fully soaked, I will pull them out, put them to one side and add them to the next batch. They need to be 100% saturated with oxalic acid to be effective. Okay, so we've soaked these and before I take them away and weigh them, I've gone through and scraped off the excess oxalic acid. They look like they're pretty well saturated. So we'll take them, drop them on the scales, see what they weigh. So they've got uh, 32 or 33 grams of oxalic acid and glycerin mixture, which is one, for, one to one by weight, which means that each strip is carrying at least 15 grams, maybe 16 grams of oxalic acid. Okay, it's a few days later. I was editing this video, as I said at the beginning, and I realized that I didn't do an outro. That was how we prepare the strips that we use to treat 500 hives. And that is our primary treatment. I hope it was useful for you. Good luck with your beekeeping, and We'll catch you later.